So now what we wanted to do is go in and check out some of the things that we've been working on uh, with the latest build. And one of those things is iPhone compatibility. Um, and that's super important to us uh, because as I said, some of these iPhones, they're super powerful. They're, they're very powerful computers, but you know, obviously one of the issues is that they're a little small, right? So it's a little bit hard to see, but I did want to show some of that. This is an iPhone uh, mini, 13 inch mini. Um, I don't think they're making the mini anymore, Probably but not. it's it's very, very tiny and small, um, but it's a very powerful device and you can run OnSong off of it. So we're gonna demonstrate that today. Yeah, so let's switch on over to our iPhone. I'm gonna run this in landscape view, but as you can see, it's similar to OnSong. You know, most of the screen is taken up by our song view. Uh, we can scroll through that just as you would expect. We can tap and go down through the song as well. Um, and then we have our familiar songs button in the upper left corner. One thing you'll notice is that our live bar is displayed in the lower right corner, uh, but it's much bigger. It's actually the same size as what you would see on your iPad. Uh, and we did that because, well, your fingers are only so small. So we made that a little bit bigger in comparison to the rest of the screen. And you know, the song is always gonna take up the width of the display. We are taking into account uh, you know, that notch that is on the iPhone. So you might see that the one side is indented further than the other. Uh, we do have to account for that notch so it's not hiding any of your lyrics and things like that. But if we tap on the songs button in the upper corner, you can see our songs menu comes up. We can navigate that just as we normally would. It looks the exact same thing. So it looks the exact same way because it is. Um, and of course we have our way that we can navigate on the right hand side with that little tiny index over there. Now one of the things that you see is that it's automatically in low light mode. Um, I have my phone set up to always be in um, dark mode. Uh, I just kind of like it better that way. And some of these new uh, devices use OLEDs and so having your device in dark mode, and that's one of the things with iOS 18, they don't, they've done a lot of work with dark mode. Mm -hmm. um, it is more power efficient to use dark mode. Uh, but, you know, as you can see here, maybe I don't want to see my chart that way. I'm going to go over how we can change all of that as well. And um, one of the things I can do is I can swipe down from the upper right corner of my screen. And if I find my brightness indicator right here, I can tap and hold on that and I can turn dark mode on and off right there with that button up top. So if I turn that off, now all of a sudden OnSong is gonna react Whoa. and suddenly go into uh, not low light mode. So we've kind of created OnSong to have low light mode well before Apple ever had dark mode. So the default, I think, in OnSong is that it's going to follow whatever you use uh, for dark mode. Okay, so if you have dark mode turned on, OnSong's gonna be in dark mode and vice versa. The nice thing is, is that you can override some of that in OnSong as well if you'd like. If you want OnSong in dark mode, but the rest of your device you don't, you can do that as well. So, anyway, when we come into our songs menu, um, we can also browse, um, and you can see that this is taking up the full, the full screen, but when I tap on this menu icon right there, you can see I kind of get this split screen view. Um, I can view all songs, I can scroll down, I can go into my sets, I can browse various ways alphabetically and so forth by key. If I wanted to like see how many songs I have in key of A minor, I can do that. Uh, you could just kind of browse around through there, find out what you want to do, uh, what you want to look at, and um, tap, and then it will automatically close that menu for you because we have such a small screen, we do want that menu out of the way so we can get to our song content. And then of course we can go through our song that way. Um, as you can see, you know, this is not making the best use of our screen real estate because we have this big white section off to the right hand side. So I'm gonna open up my menu bar. The menu bar is accessible now. And again, this is on song 2024. If I tap on those three lines over there, now the menu bar appears on the upper, the top of our screen. It overtakes that main menu. If we don't want that menu bar, we could just tap off of it, it goes away, mm. okay? Um, or we can tap it again, bring it up. I'm gonna open up my style preferences menu, just like that. And as you can see, the style preferences menu takes over. Um, I'm gonna go to my document tab and I'm gonna scroll down here. As you can see, it, you know, it does kind of stretch things out, makes use of that real estate pretty well. Um, and it looks like I'm not in the new rendering engine. So by default, OnSong uses the old rendering engine if you want some of the new features. Uh, as you can see, there's that layout section is a little disabled there. You can't 
if I, if I tap on it, it says, hey, uh, do you want to enable that new render? Because if, if you want columns, you got to enable it. So I'm going to say just for this song, I only want it for that song. Uh, it's going to turn it on. I can tap on the two there for the number of columns I want, and I can tap done. And now I have two columns. A lot more, Whoa. a lot easier to see on my iPhone that way. So uh, yeah, the new rendering engine uh, is the only way that you can get columns right now. I want to show you a couple things that are different with the iPhone version uh, that you might not be aware of. Again, that menu bar is one of those things. Um, but you might see that not every menu bar item that shows up on your iPad is here. Okay, one of the ones that is missing is the foot pedal screen. Now, it looks like there's plenty of room right now because we're in landscape mode. Um, but if I was in portrait mode, those icons would be a little bit harder, a little bit closer together. Um, but one of the things that is missing is what we call our actions editor. The nice thing is it's only a couple taps away. Um, and you typically don't need it all the time. Uh, but I'm gonna tap on the gear icon there, uh, go down to my editors, and from there I can tap actions. And here's where you could set up, as you can see, <laughs> you mm. can set up your foot pedals. This is like one of those things that are different, right? So mm -hmm. it's gonna only let you use it in portrait mode. And you can see why I'm not running in portrait mode right now. All but right. if I wanted to configure, you know, a an a foot pedal, I can do that right here. I can flip through and see all the different foot pedals. I can connect those to my iPad. I can set up my screen actions, etc. And when I'm done, I can close that and now uh, just kind of go back. There we go, we're back to our landscape view. So we can use foot pedals with it. Uh, just remember that that's not in the menu bar. We've also removed messages. Again, if you're using messages, if you even know what they are, messages are a way to communicate with your band. Again, probably not something you need regular access to, so we've removed it from the actual menu bar. Um, the other thing that's quite different is the song editor. So I wanted to show you that, again, because we don't have a whole lot of room. Um, I'm gonna tap on my attachments button up here in the menu bar, and then tap edit chords and lyrics. And you can see, you can see it once the keyboard's up, right? <laughs> you don't have a whole lot of room in landscape mode, a little bit more room yeah. in portrait mode. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a problem, right? But if you have a keyboard attached to your phone, well, it's no problem, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that, that keyboard goes away. Um, but we also really condensed uh, the menu that you have here. So if I wanted to see all my menu options uh, there in the editor, they're actually gonna display as this actions screen. So mm -hmm. I can still edit my metadata. I can still place that song in a book. I can rewrite it into a different key. Um, I can access my text tools all from there as well. And one of the things that has been removed, by the way, um, from the iPhone, uh, uh, sorry, from OnSong altogether, and the editor is the conversion, uh, what we call the conversion toolbar. And that was always down at the bottom before the keyboard came up. So OnSong now has this idea of attachments, right? This is new. Um, so you can have multiple PDF files, text files, all kinds of different files, different versions of the song can show up here in your attachments menu. Um, and if you had a PDF file there, uh, you could actually tap and hold, get that context menu and one of those things, as you can see, there's a convert to PDF button. Um, if you have a PDF, you can convert it to text. So that's how you would handle that in the attachments menu. Mm -hmm. um, you can also edit everything. You can check out the properties, th those files and all that fun stuff yeah. as well. So that context menu, by the way, the context menu is all over the place in OnSong. Uh, if you tap and hold on things like, um, you know, in a list, like you're looking at songs, you're looking at attachments, you're looking at background media, backing tracks, that, check out that context menu. There's a lot of really cool tricks in each one of those.